one-way street. I thought I knew you, Dave. Look, don't be stupid. Just get back in the car. Let's just talk about this, yeah? You're giving evidence against me. There's nothing to talk about. Madam Foreman, has the jury reached a verdict on which you're all agreed? Yes. On the count of causing death by dangerous driving, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Yes. Your Honour, we have considered the alternative offence of driving without due care and attention, and on this charge, we find the defendant guilty. Derek. Thought you'd have left by now. Yeah, I had to stay behind, signed a couple of letters, sir. Do you need a lift? Uh, no, thanks. Sandra's picking me up. In fact, she should be here by now. Oh, I'll see you there, then. Sir? Huh? Wouldn't you be a bit pushed? I mean, Hendon and Tintagel House all in an afternoon. I mean, I don't mind if you don't come. No, <laughs> no. Wouldn't miss your presentation for the world. By far the most pleasant duty of the two. Yes. It's a shame they're both on the same day, really. Anyway, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Well, don't let it spoil the celebrations, Derek. You've earned your spurs. Yes. I'll probably see you later then. Hmm. Oh, come on, Derek. Sorry, love. Hey, is that Brownwell's latest? Very nice. Better than the one they gave you. Yeah, well, it's certainly better than the one we've got now. And chauffeur driven too. As opposed to wife driven. I think I should be right. George, shouldn't you have left yet? Yeah, I'm just on my way. Well, well, how's Tony? Well, considering he's looking at losing his job and his pension for the second time this year, I'd say he's bearing up remarkably. You're decent. I just wanted to say good luck. Well, you probably won't need it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Sorry, Pop. You ready then? Yeah. It's a pity Tony has to be put through this. It's a pretty sun hell has to be put through, but there it is. Mr. Conway did his best from in court, and that's my turn. Well, I'm sure Tony will be grateful, sir. I must go, Andrew. Mr. Conway will be halfway there by now. Thanks. All right, Sandra, try it again. What? Another accelerator. But there's still no power, Derek. All right, all right, turn it off. Garage job. Yes. If I felt there was something wrong the other day, I should have checked it out then. Slipped your mind, I suppose. How long before kick-off? About an hour. I'll call a cab. John, you're a sight for sore eyes. What's up? Bloody car's only broke down on me, hasn't it? Sandra! What? It's Don Beach. He's going to the do as well to give us a lift. Is he? Good. Cancel that. Perfect timing, Don. Well, I wouldn't want you to miss a big day, would I go? Come on, Sandra! Tony! This is a nice car, Don. Are you looking forward to the ceremony? Me? Yeah, I suppose so. The Long Service and Good Conduct Medal. Sounds very grand. Oh, I don't know. It seems to me that you're putting years and years of hard service and the only way they can say thank you is with a bit of tin in a fancy box. Don. Oh, don't let Derek hear you talking like that. 
been practicing his handshake with the commissioner. No, I haven't. Yes, you have in the mirror. I saw you. Well, who would have thought you two were together at Hendon? How much that supposed to mean? Oh, Don's taken care of himself, hasn't he? We met before, Don. Yeah, possibly. With one of the socials, perhaps. Oh, yeah, about a year ago, you were with your wife, a girlfriend, and Derek was. Have you noticed, Don? When my husband gets drunk, I always treat it to be the version of my way. Love, please. What? You can go for one of those flats. Asking price must be steep, though. Not today, please, Sam. All right. Just trying to make conversation. Yeah, well, don't bother. I doubt whether Bijou properties are on Tony Stamp's mind right now. This Brownlow's backing him up. Well, why shouldn't he? Why shouldn't he back him up? What's the reason? He's paid his dues in court. That won't stop them booting him out of a job. Ah, come on, Dave. What choice did you have? As I'll ever be. Hey, come on. I suppose I'm going to spend a whole afternoon standing around being ignored whilst Derek gets drunk with his mates. There's no booze. No? No. It's afternoon tea, strictly cupcakes and cucumber sandwiches. Even worse, we'll all have to go down the pub after and stay until closing. Oh. Old play. Something like that, yeah. Mm. Nice car. Sandra, come on. Hello, Don. Nice right. to see you. Repeat, any unit deal, 17 Lime Harbour Street, a burglary. Any unit deal. It's a burglary, Sarge. Victim sounded in a real flap. Let me try it. Repeat, Lime Harbour Street. Burglary. Any units deal. Sierra Oscar 340. We're near, Sarge. Thank you. What the hell do they think they're playing at? Well, I think Dave's got a lot on his mind today, Sarge. All this business with Tony. We're all worried about Tony, Jamila. But the best way for Dave Quinnan to take his mind off it is to concentrate on his work. Yes, Sarge. Hello, Jack. Hi, how are you? It's good to see you. Hi. Isn't that Derek? Derek. Derek Conway. Oh, could I take one of these? Yes, of course. Thank you. Hello, Jack. How are you? Missing a decent afternoon's golf for this. I'm only joking, Derek. I'm great. And you? Oh, I'm fine. Yes. Oh, this is my wife, Sandra. Is Jack Spencer. Hello. Uh, Jack's at Hoxton. Uh, not anymore. I was transferred to Spicer Street about nine months ago. And I got knocked upstairs. I'm an OCU commander now. I've got my... Oh, hello. Hello. I've got my own division. Oh, well, uh, congratulations. And what about you? I thought... Uh, no, no. I could have sworn. Derek was acting up for a while. It uh, just didn't work out. You know how it is, Jack. I'm June, by the way. I just thought I'd mention it because my husband seems to have completely forgotten. <laughs> Fancy a bite to eat? Fine. Well, I need a cup of coffee. Hello, Paul. Hi, Doc. Should have guessed you'd be here. Well, why wouldn't I be? No reason. That was all it was in the end, like death and taxes, eh? Mm. I'm surprised to see you here, though. Last time we spoke, you were a bit unhappy. Where was that? About 18 months ago. You just missed getting DI, said you were going to quit. I meant it, Doc. I should have got Inspector. It was my call. Some bloke ten years younger just sailed through. Oh, Recognise the steam iron, didn't they? The nine iron. I'll tell you about these days, I'll tell you about the things. It's not my fault. I So what made you stay then? Oh, you know, this and that. Yeah, pension, job security. I didn't want to stay, Don. They treated me very badly. Yeah, 
Okay. And what was I supposed to do at my age? Well, it's a big old world out there, Paul. Especially for an ex-copper who's known nothing else all his professional life. Better the devil you know, eh? Yeah. Anyway, look. Job has its good days, doesn't it? Uh. Look, I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later, all right? Yeah, sure. Just doing my job. Yeah, I know. So why treat me like a criminal? Paid my dues in court. This goes against me. I stand to lose ten years' earning power and the whole of my pension. It comes to well over a quarter of a million, roughly. Does it? Yeah. Can't believe it either. Four o'clock this morning, I got a calculator out. What else am I going to do? I've got no training. I'll probably end up in some tin pot security job pulling in two quid an hour. I can't pay my mortgage on that. Well, come on, Tony. Might never happen, eh? Tone! Excuse me! Oh, boss here then, Derek. Yeah, somewhere. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. He didn't tell me he was coming. Didn't I? Well, the top brass usually turn out to cheer their side on. I aim to make it a fixture. Oh, really? Thank you. Sorry. Look who's out there. Mm -hmm. It's Paul Duffy, Harringay CID. Seems to have started the celebrations early. Mm. Do you remember when he and Don were at Hendon together? They were thick as thieves. Don Beach. Yeah. They used to organise late night poker games, smuggle in some booze, get everybody legless and then take advantage of the situation. I must say, I never liked Paul. The word is, he just missed Inspector. Listen, do you want to uh, sit down and listen to the band or something? Cheers. Eleventh floor. Well, you cheer that. Well, that started. They're finished, weren't The thing is, George. They would have had their pound of flesh. Hello, Don. So, how are you? Oh, alive and kicking. You? Oh, you know, hanging on in there. Oh, I think you're doing a bit better than that, Don. You're looking quite the elder statesman. Hey, less of the elder, if you don't mind. Oh, come on, look around. You ever seen so many beer bellies in Barracas veins? <laughs> but this is for your medal. Oh, thanks. You're in good shape. Looking pretty good yourself. <laughs> well, getting a divorce was the best thing I did. Suddenly I was free and in charge again. I've been in charge ever since. Mm, it was Michael, your ex, right? Morris, and don't pretend you didn't know. <laughs> and me? <laughs> I went out with you, remember? It may have been a long time ago, but I don't believe you've changed that much. I don't remember a great deal about going out. More like staying in, wasn't it, sir? Which we did rather well, I think. Don't you? Yeah. Is that Paul Duffield? <sighs> yeah. Suffering from a bit of stage fright by the looks of it. What's there to worry about? Well, I don't think what? he's exactly thrilled at being here. John, John, How do you know? I spoke to him earlier. You and he were great mates, weren't you? You still see each other? No. Today was the first time in ages. Hey. We pulled some crazy stunts when we were at Hendon together, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Remember when you both got drunk and I tried to sober you up for the parade? I got you back on your feet again, but Paul missed it, got punished. He was so angry, Don. I don't think he ever forgave me. I think Paul's been angry most of his life. Well, you should know. No, 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 it's true. The last time we spoke, he just failed to make D.I. He was really bitter. Talked about getting one over on the men. What do you think he meant? I don't know. Well, I thought he'd quit, but he's still here, isn't he? Like a bear with a sore head. Ladies and gentlemen, could you take your seats, please? The ceremony will start in five minutes.
Uh, Tony, don't you think you should put your club on? Right. Do you want a hand? No, no, it's okay, thanks, Roger. I can manage. How's your girlfriend then? Sue Hayward's not my girlfriend, Paul. Inspector Neil Drake, Barking and Dagenham Division. Who tells you who she's working for now? I know who she's working for, Paul. The drug squad. Not anymore, she doesn't. DSA would has moved. The CIB. What? That's right. She's defected to the other side. Investigating the likes of you and me now. You're planning on sleeping with the enemy, mate. Detective Sergeant Donald Beach, Sun Hill CID. Detective Sergeant Tony Quinton, Special Branch. Sorry, sir, just circulating. And there's a lot of old friends that do like this. Yes, I run into familiar faces myself. Uh, thank you for being here, sir. I know that you've got other calls on your time today. I can honestly say it's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Well, I won't keep you. So, ladies, are you proud of us? You heard what the Commissioner said? I bet he gives the same speech every time, but... I know, but wasn't it good to hear? <laughs> All that stuff about sacrifice. And from the top man, too. Oh, oh Jack. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Derek, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Sandra? Charles. I just wanted to offer my personal congratulations, Derek. Thank you very much. Well, it's always a privilege to see good officers getting their medals. And you and Don Beach are among the best. Yep. Charles, why don't you join us? Oh, it's very kind of you. Thanks. You and I need to talk, Paul. I want to know what's going on with Hayward. Nothing. I don't believe you. There's something bothering you. I want to know what it is. Now, before we tuck into the fish paste sandwiches? You had no idea that Hayward was in CIB? None, I swear. Yeah, of course not. She wasn't going to tell you, was she? When did she join? Six months ago. CIB expanded operations. Commissioner went on record, remember? going to make police corruption a priority. Paul, I know all that. Haywood, ask about me. We talked about you, yeah, but only ancient history. Anything else? More recent? Well, I might have mentioned about you not getting DI, that you weren't best pleased. Paul, are you in trouble? I could be. That call earlier on on the mobile is bad news. Very bad. One of my snouts has been arrested. Dealing crack to kiddies. CIB got wind of it, now Sue was offering him a deal. Reduce charges if he snitches on me. I'm being investigated, Don. CIB's on my case. Sorry, parking. That's why we came by tube. How are you feeling? Previous hearing's been going on a bit. I thought Mr. Brownlow was coming. Yeah, he'll be here. did they? Already made up their minds. What are you up for? Drink drive. Right. You? Without you care and attention. 
What, uh, they didn't want to know if they were mitigating circumstances. I might have sort of stayed at home. Right. But when we got to Johannesburg, the golf course there was immaculate. Apparently, they trim round the edge of the holes with nail scissors. Really? And the green, beautiful, like it had been painted. Now, I mean, Cape Town was, was all right, wasn't it? But, I mean, Joburg in a class of its own. Now, if you're a golfing man, Charles, South Africa is the place to go. You can try telling my wife that. And what about you, Derek? You ever swung a nine iron? No, it's not exactly me. In any case, I don't think Sandra would appreciate me disappearing off every weekend. Oh, I'm sure Sandra wouldn't mind. You'd give Derek your permission, wouldn't you? Of course I would. In fact, I wish Derek had learned to play years ago. It would have done his career no end of good. It's now right, Charles. You mean if he'd uh, lost to the right person? Yes, for if Derek had lost a couple of times to you, perhaps you would have been able to recommend his promotion to superintendent. Sandra. Because I can't think of any other reason why you didn't recommend him. Sandra. But excuse me, I'm going for another cup of tea. To begin with, I took back Anders because I was angry at not being made DI. Easy money, Don. All I had to do was turn a blind eye, stall a few inquiries. So easy. How much? A lot. Who paid you, Paul? You won't breathe a word of this. It's between you and me, right? I promise. On my snout, he organised a go-between, so I never actually met these guys. Good idea who they were, though. One of them owned a string of bingo halls. Barry Clark. Do you know? Maybe. You do, don't you? Well, in fact, he approached me once, not so long ago. What, he tried to buy you off? Yes. The difference is, you told him where to go. You're still an honest copper, Don. And I'm not. Sandra. I'm going outside. I need some fresh air. Right. Clark won't talk. Won't he? No. Your problem is the go-between. Because it's his name that your snout's going to offer up if he wants to do the deal. So who is it, Paul? Young bloke, Michael Reardon. Right, a Reardon. Ring any bells? Never heard of him. Well, he was new from Dublin. A lot of people were using him. Then it's odds on he'll keep his gob shut too. If he wants to be seen as reliable. So CIB could get nowhere. With Sue Hayward in charge? Oh, come on! Now, calm down. What if other names come up? Other offices? What if I'm just the first to go down in a much bigger investigation? Is that likely? I don't know. But it's a possibility. Anything can happen. And that's what's doing my head in. I just don't know. Then why don't I ask? What? Well, I know, Sue, don't I? I could try and find out what's happening. Would you? Sir, Derek. I've got to be off, I'm afraid, or I won't make it to Tintagel House. But uh, enjoyable afternoon. I'm sorry about the... Uh... So am I, rather. Don't worry about it. Well, I know you made an effort to get here, so you didn't come here to be insulted. Seriously, Derek, forget about it. I have. Uh, keep me informed about Tony's hearing, will you, sir? Yes. It's keeping Brown low. I don't know. He's supposed to be on his way here from Ender. Yeah. They're handing out long service angle conduct medals. Don't reckon I'm going to qualify, am I? PC Messenger. We're ready for you. Good luck, mate. Yeah, still got the same government. Uh, actually, I was in the middle of asking her out for dinner. Do you mind? Thank you. Don! What? Come on. <laughs> You're in a hurry. Yeah, well, when you get to our age, Sue, why hang about, hmm? So, how about it? I know this great Italian place. There's a wonderful Zabayone. I'm sorry, Don. I'd love to, but I'm waiting for a call. Oh. So who's the lucky fellow, then? It's work. Work? Oh, come on, Don. Let's stop all this. You know I work for CIB, don't you? No. You knew all along. Yeah, well, perhaps. I don't know why I just didn't tell you. Well, I do, actually. 
Being in CIB doesn't exactly make you popular. And we were getting on so well. Well, why should I mind? You don't? No. Actually, I admire you for it. You were never the one for an easy option, were you? I do see it as an important job, fighting corruption. Yeah, well, nobody doubts that, Sue. Least of all me. But it's just the way it's done sometimes, you know. Phoning up anonymously and saying what you like about a fellow officer. Puts a lot of innocent people through hell. Only the guilty ones go through hell, Don. And that's because they've got something to hide. Why? Are you afraid someone will ring up and do the dirty on you? Who knows? Perhaps they have already. Don? I, I just suddenly realised. What? Why you were asking me about Paul Duffield earlier. He's under investigation, isn't he? You know, this was supposed to be a happy day, Sandra. Both of us be enjoying ourselves. Yes, well, I'm sorry I had to say something. Oh, no, you didn't. You deserve that promotion. Do you think he doesn't know exactly how I feel about it? Yes, well, perhaps he needed to hear it from me. Why? I'm your wife, Derek. You weren't the only one who was affected. I knew how much it mattered to you, how disappointed you were. You brought it all home and I picked up the pieces. Derek! Jack wants to take some photos. He's got some of the others together. I'd like to go home straight after, if you don't mind. Okay. Warren Carr, please. Thanks. They've done him. Look, we don't know the details of the case. We can't judge. I can. All you have to do is admit the charge. If you want to say anything else, then you jot it down and I'll read it out to the board on your behalf. I'm not going in there. Tony! Come on, Tony. Tell them for me, will you? Or shall I write a note? Tony! No, it's all right, sir. I'll deal with it. Oh, Tony! What's the matter with Tony? What's going on? Well, it's, uh, it's a bit hot in here, so he's just going to get some fresh air. This is Miss McMahon, Tony's counsel. Oh, pleased to meet you. Uh, Mr. Brownlow, I'm, I'm just going to go and get some fresh air myself, sir. Mr. Brownlow, nice to meet you. Um, when you come through? Have we got a problem? No, no, not at all. I'm sorry, Don. I should have come clean about my interest in Duffield. I took advantage, I know. But you were his friend. What's he done? I can't tell you. Oh, Sue. So. It's serious. That's all I can say. You forgive me. <laughs> Did I help? You confirmed my suspicions. And now? We're hoping somebody will talk. Well, that's the call I'm waiting for, to say the deal is on. I need this result, Don. I really do. So... What if I helped you get it? You know something? No, forget it. Don! No, forget it, sir. Look, Don, I realise your instinct is to stick by your old friend. You're loyal and I respect that. But you're an honourable man, too. You can see the damage corrupt officers do to public confidence and to the rest of us trying to do a decent job. Duffield has to be stopped. Off the record? Of course. Ah. Uh, strictly off the record. This conversation never took place. When Paul was sounding off earlier, a name came up. Michael Reardon from Dublin. You might want to check him out. I'll get on to it now. Thanks, Don. You're a star. Well, when you've uh, finished with Paul, will you be moving on to anyone else? What? Duffield. Is he the star of something bigger? It's only Duffield I'm after, Don. For now. Tony! 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 
What the hell are you playing? Bloody enough. I'm going home. Saving the trouble of sacking me like that other poor bastard. Oh, I see. So you're bottling it, are you? That's what it looks like to me. What's the point of going in there? But I think that's the least that you can do. Oh, we've all bent over backwards to try and help you out. Even Mr Brownlow's left a jolly to be with you here today. But listen to me. You have been a pain in the butt half the time, and okay, okay, with good reason. But after all that, you expect me to go back and tell the team that, that you just chuck the towel in. You can't be bothered, and you want to go home, yeah? It's because I know what's going to happen. No, Tony, you don't. Well, I think it's a dead sure certainty. But you still got to go in there and face them. Look, whatever happens, it can't be like it was, can it? That bloke. Simon Atwell. I still can't believe it. I wake up in the night sometimes and I just feel sick. I'm not even sure I want to be in the job anymore, that's the thing. If I can't handle this, then what's the point? The point is that we're all behind you. <laughs> all except for Dave Quinn, and that's for sure. But who do you think brought Luke Ashton back on side at court, eh? Now, if Dave Quinn hadn't spoken to me, he would have blown it. Now, just think of the mess you would have been in if he'd have gone over to the prosecution as well, eh? What happens if I go in there and lose my rag with them? Tell them to stuff their job. With mean, the mood I'm in right now, I might just do that. That's your choice, Tone. I've said my piece. Yes, Paul. What'd you say? Did you tell me? I'm going down, aren't I? I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Bad news? What bad news? It's only about 20 odd years down the drain. What am I going to do, Don? What the hell am I going to do? Well, you could try laying off the booze for a bit, Paul. You what? Getting drunk's not going to help, is it? This is supposed to be one of the best days of my career and I'm stuffed. It's over. I'll be suspended, lose my pension. Probably end up inside. Do you know what happens to coppers inside, Don? So what does it matter if I get drunk? What does any of it bloody matter? This... You just remember one thing, Paul, mate. You made all your own choices. You took the money. And for a while, everything was fine and dandy, wasn't it? Well, now you've come unstuck. And you are welcome to feel sorry for yourself, but you save it for later, okay? When no one can see you. Because right now, Paul, you're gonna pull yourself together. You're gonna sober up and you are gonna behave like nothing's happened, understand? Need to tell the sergeant? No, no, it's all right, I'll do it. Brownlow's gonna go spare. It's not your fault. Well, that doesn't matter, does it? This busy stamp here. Hello, Sandy. Oh, Don. Why aren't you with the others? Oh, I don't think I'll be very good company at the moment. Why is that? We bumped into Mr. Brownlow. Or rather, he gave us his blessing. Ah, uh, I had one of those. Yes, but I expect you said all the right things. Uh. I'm afraid I didn't. I was a bit... Uh... Now, let me guess. You, um... You mentioned something about Derek not getting promoted, right? Yes. I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> Wish I'd been there. No. I've upset Derek. I was just sticking up for him, but he likes to keep everything peaceful, you know, even if it means sucking up to Brownlow. Is that what you think Derek does? <sighs> Let me tell you something, Sandy. Your old man's one of the straightest coppers I've ever had to work for. 
You ask anyone at Sun Hill, they'll tell you the same thing. What you see with Chief Inspector Derek Conway is exactly what you get. That's why he wasn't promoted, because he doesn't suck up, get political. Play golf. Exactly. They said his face didn't fit. <laughs> you mean he's not faceless enough. Still, that's all in the past, Sandra. Derek still has to get on with his chief super, you know. Talk to him. You weren't there when Derek could come home after work and sit there for hours on end not saying a word. Or, uh, drink a bottle of scotch. Sound off, it went on for months and it ate away at him and it ate away at me. And there were times when I just wanted to leave. Yeah, well, it must have been bad. But, um, well, you still stuck by him, didn't you? I mean, you did the right thing. He's a very lucky man, Sandy, you know that? You seem happy, Don. You've done all right. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not as simple as that, is it? No. Oh, no, believe me. OK, so I jog along, you know, the car and the clothes and well, the girlfriends. But I've got no family. I've got no wife. I just live for myself. There's no one else to share anything with, Sandra, not even today. So it does mean something to you, then? It means something to Derek, I can see that. He still believes in the job. He hasn't lost his faith no matter what's happened. So don't be too hard on him, Sandy. He deserves that medal as much as anyone else here. PC Stan. The charge against you is that at Hoxton Crown Court you were found guilty of driving without due care and attention, contrary to Section 3 of the Road Traffic Act 1988. Do you deny or admit the offence with which you are charged? I admit it. Sit down, please. Sir, the facts of the case are these. On the date in question while driving the area car, PC Stamp knocked down and fatally injured a pedestrian, Simon Atwell. Yes, it's, it's good to see you looking so, um, so good. Listen, we must get together for some dinner. Yes. Goodbye, nice to meet you. And do send my love to Sam. Yes, I will. Keith, Jack. Oh, Let's go on over this. Right, I'm finished here. We can go now. Oh, hang on, love. I've changed my mind. Let's stay. Yes? If you'd like. Well, some of the lads are talking about going down the pump. It sounds like a good idea. We could all do with a drink. Right. Don? Uh, no, not for me, thanks, God. You sure you don't mind, then? Hey, Derek Conway, let's just you and me go out and have a good time. You, me, and old blue eyes. See you, Don. Go. PC Stamp was answering an urgent assistance call when the accident happened. He believed uh, a fellow officer's life was in danger. Uh, we've already gleaned that from the transcripts of the court hearing, Miss McMahon. We would like to hear more about PC Stamp's record in the area car. Yes, sir. Um... Uh, since qualifying in the area car some 11 years ago, PC Stamp has proved himself a skillful high-speed driver. And we do understand that PC Stamp has an exemplary driving record, uh, Miss McMahon? Well, over that number of years, sir, uh, it is inevitable that the area car would be involved in some accidents. Go on. PC Stamp has had 10 accidents in that time. 10? Yes, sir. At a cost to the force of some... £16,000, sir. Well, two of those accidents occurred off the public highway. In car parks. In car parks? Yes, sir. Yeah, right, I see. Don, I've got to go. Yeah? The deal's on. He wants to talk right away. He's going to tell us everything. Well done. I'd still like to go out for that dinner. Will you call me? Yeah, of course I will. PC Stamp is a solid and dependable officer and an excellent thief taker. He has a clear head in a crisis. Are you saying that uh, the tragic incident in which PC Stamp was involved was entirely out of character? Yes, sir, I am. And I know that he'll face the consequences of his action with his customary rigour. Indeed, his ability to face his shortcomings is one of his sterling qualities. He's always been very keen to add to his skills. 
In September 96, he took a front-wheel driving course, and I know that he'll learn from the experience. In 11 years as area car driver, this is the first time that he's faced prosecution. I can understand his need to brush up on his skills for the driving record like his, Mr. Brownlow. Would you be prepared to take him back at your station, should this hearing allow him to remain in his job? Yes, sir, without any hesitation at all. And I know that he'll repay his debt both to the public and to the service with single-minded dedication. Still no news? Nothing. It's been a while. Miss McMahon, do you wish to say anything on behalf of your client? I uh, just wanted to say that uh, I feel totally responsible for what happened. It's still hard for me to come to terms with it and uh, I've had to do a lot of hard thinking. Basically, uh, since I first put on a uniform, what is it, uh, well over 20 years ago now, things have changed out of all recognition. There's always something different. We're always being tested. On the day in question, I failed that test. Simon Atwell died because of it. I should never forgive myself for that. At the time, I thought I was acting for the best, but now I see that I was at fault. And I can only say how sorry I am. I want to stay in the job. I know that more than anything. But whatever your decision today, I'll abide by it. I, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Brownlow. I really appreciate what he said on my behalf. It means a lot. Thank you. We'll close now to consider punishment. It's like old times, isn't it? You know, before we had the kids. How do you mean? Oh, you know, a nice cosy evening down the pub. <laughs> Getting to know each other better. Home for a nightcap. Maybe an early night. There you go. Oh, cheers, Jack. Thanks. That's all right, Derek. You're in the chair next time. Now, let me see. What was I, um, what was I talking about? Well, I don't think you were, were you, Jack? Wasn't Derek going to tell you about the International Police Conference that went on in Florida? Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll just give Mr. Conway a ring. Of course, sir. Thanks for hanging on. Really appreciate it. That's all right, Tony. Let's hope it all works out. He's got a hang on, hasn't he? What? Oh, yeah, right. So things go pear shaped, he can. He's got me back so I can clear up my locker. Yeah, but at least you came back and faced him. I had to, didn't I? After what you said about Dave. Yeah. Sorry I've been such a pain, George. <laughs> What's new, mate? The thing is, Jack, other countries have been promoting intelligence than policing for years. Britain's just catching up. That's since my time in Florida. Sorry about this. Hello? Ah, oh, sir. Still waiting. Sorry to interrupt the festivities. Thought you'd like to know how things are going. Look, hang on. Uh, I think we're being called back. I'll, uh, I'll call you later.
We must take account of the public outrage felt at a serving police officer being held responsible for the death of an innocent bystander. It is with deep regret that we see an officer of your experience before us today. We take account of your remorse and of the hard thinking you've clearly done. The fact that your OCU commander has spoken so highly of you and is ready to take you back has persuaded us that we may take an exceptional course. Your punishment will therefore take the form of a reprimand. This board is now closed. Tom? What do you say? You're still in the job, mate. Right, thanks for letting me know, sir. Would it be all right if I spread the news? Right, thank you, sir. Great news. Let's play out on all units, shall we? I expect you'll be out celebrating tonight. I might go a pint or two, sir, yeah. Thanks for the lift, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. For everything. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm only glad we got the right outcome, Tony. Well, no. Nice, sir. Nice, sir. It's nice of him, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you swung it for him, sir. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Andrew. Oh, well, obviously, Tony feels that's the case. I'm sure he was grateful, sir. Thank you. I expect Mr and Mrs Conway appreciated having you at the medal ceremony, too, didn't they? Oh, yes. Of course, some people have different ways of showing their appreciation, don't they? I suppose they do. Right, so, so Tony goes, he goes, he goes. I'd just like to say, whatever happens to me today, I'd like to thank Mr. Brown for being there. Shut up. I can't believe it, right? He was thanking him. Like thanking him for being there. Of course, he was only waiting on to escort him back to the station to give him the old elbow. I was brain dead, right? Yeah, tell me about it, mate. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Congratulations, Tony. Thanks. Sit down. So you're going to be giving Vicky Hagen a bit of competition again, then, eh? Uh, competition's for kids, isn't it? <laughs> I've uh, been a pain in the butt, according to Georgia. That's true. Right, uh, let's for a drink. Get your man out. Dave, lager? Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Sign again, Yes, please, George. Thanks for what you did in court, Dave. Luke Ashton. It was the least I could do. Pick of a job, innit? <laughs> yeah. What now, I wonder? Well, it looks slow down a bit, so I'm getting the registration now, but... Sierra Oscar from Sierra One. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, vehicle check, please, Sarge. Registration Delta 405. November, whiskey, November. Okay, stand by. Yes, that's a Fiat Uno registered to Jane Douglas. Oh, what? I'm not a guest. No report. What are you doing, Tony? Let this out once and for all. Look, hold on, mate. This is Tony. Tony, it's best if you leave it to somebody else. Tony.